Hello YouTube, this is Brian Owls Tech Tips. This has been probably the hardest video I've ever had to record because this is my ninth go around trying to get this sucker to record every single time for some stupid reason the either the, the recorder craps out or something so this has been pretty testy so I'm gonna I'm going to show you how to perform a clean install of Kubuntu, which is the KDE spin of Ubuntu, KDE or K desktop environment, was designed to mimic very closely the look and feel of Microsoft Windows. So without further ado, you have whenever the disk boots or the USB drive, you have start Kubuntu, check disk for defects, test memory boot from first hard disk. So we're going to go to start Kubuntu. Select that and hit enter. It should by default if you don't do anything automatically go to start Kubuntu. But if it doesn't you know what to do. Now the boot process booting from the disk um, depending upon what your hardware is. If you're booting from a USB drive it can take a little while depending on if it's USB 2 or USB 3. USB 3 obviously is going to run and function a whole lot faster. Uh, it also determined by whether it's Blu-ray or DVD. If it's DVD, which is what the ISO is uh, the format for, DVDs can take a very long time to finally boot. And then once it finally boots up, it'll actually boot fully into the environment so it will function as a live distro so here it is booting up the environment so like I said obviously this is a live image at which once it fully boots it will give you the option to be able to perform the install but at startup you can kinda check the system out and you'll notice a few things one your network icon over here looks just like it does on Windows your audio looks just like it does there's your most recent devices and there's the instant messaging app and if you click on the little up arrow here's your other TSRs which you'll notice there's quite a few running in the background that you don't normally see in Windows but that's fine this little three menu three bar menu indicator over here if you click on it, it gives you the ability to modify the screen edges the height you can add widgets spacers You'll also notice if you come down here, it says Task Manager, which just gives you even more of what you're used to seeing with Windows. And of course, the K with the gear highlight it, Application Launcher. So you click on the Start, the, the K menu thing, which is pretty much similar to the Start button. And then if you go to Applications, you'll notice that it pans over just like it does in Windows. And if you hit Back, it'll take you back to the original so we're going to go back to all applications and you'll notice under internet you have several things installed there's your Firefox web browser pretty well standard on almost all Linux installs the only one that is different is uh, <clears throat> well the only one that I'm aware of that's different that's built off of Ubuntu is Kali, Kali tends to have ice weasel on it instead and of course you have your settings utilities and everything else you have leave which will let you lock log out shut down restart suspend all that good stuff you have your history here's your computer where you do uh, a lot of the settings and stuff like that but the big thing is being able to check out your file system and everything and then of course you have your favorites which uh, on Windows is commonly run or different things like that right click on the desktop you have your desktop settings looks a lot like Windows then you have a little menu up here if you click on it this gives you a lot more desktop stuff you can add widgets lock widgets lock the screen leave desktop settings and then if you want to do the install you have this little guy right here that you click on and might have to click on it a couple of times or just click on it and give it a minute and eventually the installer will finally come up okay now it says you may wish to read the release notes or update this installer we're going to select update this installer first so once that finishes it says please choose the language to use 
for the install process. Make sure you select your language and click continue. And whenever it goes to the next screen, the next screen is the prepare part. There we go. Now preparing to install Kubuntu. The first thing that you want to do is select download updates while installing Kubuntu and then install third party and this particular go around I'm not going to be able to select that but under normal circumstances I would highly recommend you select download install up, download updates while installing Kubuntu and install third party software for graphics, Wi-Fi, hardware, flash, blah 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 once those are selected click continue okay now we're on the disk setup under install type so for the install type we're actually going to select guided use entire disk for this um, if you want to see a full run through on how to configure the hard drive you can watch the uh, video for installing Ubuntu and just fast forward to that particular part uh, the, the setting up the drive is pretty much the same by using manual and everything else to save time on this one since I've already got a recording of it um, I'm gonna go ahead and select use entire disk now I would highly recommend that you use you use use entire disk and set up encrypted LVM that will set it up in a logical volume management which will also give you the ability not only for the encryption but also if you're going to uh, increase drive space or anything like that or uh, if you're gonna increase the amount of RAM later on down the road and you will have to make adjustments on the drive sizes to be able to increase the size of your swap file if you need to know how to set up the swap file you can also refer back to the other uh, just the, the installing Ubuntu or how to perform a clean install of Ubuntu 16.04 um, basically the, the rundown is you figure up the size of your swap file by one and a half times the amount of RAM that you have so if you have six gig of RAM then you're going to add three and it'll give you a nine gig total that'll be the size of your swap file if you have four gig of RAM that'll make it six gig so your swap file needs to be six gig which is 6144 to figure out the, how big the swap file is in megabytes to be able to set it up correctly all you have to do is multiply six which is six gig by one zero two four and that'll give it to you in megabytes so multiply nine by 1024 and it'll give you that in megabytes so once you have that all set up if you don't want to use the entire disk and set up encryption you don't want to encrypt the whole hard drive then you can use guided use entire disk and set up LVM this particular go around since this is a lab machine I'm not going to use the LVM I'm just going to use the guided use entire disk it's not going to set it all up as one just physical partition once that is selected it's going to give you how it's going to format out the drive which is absolutely fine those are the changes you want it to make and it's also going to format your uh, partitions so you can see here that partition 1 on SDA is going to be EXT4 which will be the slash which is pretty much everything and then partition 5 is going to be set as a swap file pay no mind to the fact that it shows partition 1 and partition 5 and none others in between you will notice that there is a fairly good gap right there in the video that is because it decided to kick out on me one more time while I was shooting this video I wasn't going to do it a tenth time so I decided to do it this way <coughs> now if you were paying attention down at the very bottom this thing was constantly copying files over while I was going through this and walking me through the configuration and everything <clears throat> so while it was in the process of copying the files um, and we were going through the configuration I got the time zone set click continue so once you have the time zone set up for your area all you gotta do is hit continue you'll be good to go on that and then from there you'll create your user so you'll make sure to put a good user account in and make sure you set up a good password for the love of God do not use um, auto login and you can select encrypt your home folder if you didn't encrypt the entire hard drive it'll ask for a passphrase at the end of the video at the end of the install and 
uh, you'll put the passphrase in twice and that'll set up the encryption on the home folder which you'll have to use from that point forward to be able to use the files that's in your home folder um, now for the username you'll want to make sure and remember that the user profile the very first one you set up is your super user account so you'll want to put in a good username and for the password put in a very strong password now with the good username uh, don't use anything that references that this is an administrator account so don't name it admin don't name it root or anything like that that's no bueno for security stance and you want to make sure you name it something where you know that it's your super user account but it's not obvious that that's what it is so you don't want to make it like completely different from all the user other user profiles but just give it a completely different name use like a, a different family name but you can make up like the dog just add your last name to your dog's name uh, unless your dog's name's like biscuit or something like that then you don't want to do that you want it to look as human of a name as possible but not actually be named admin password make sure it's longer than 14 characters use <clears throat> uppercase lowercase numbers special characters and for the love of God, don't use anything that is personal information to you. Uh, don't use anything that is <coughs> related to you. So <coughs> you don't want to use family member names, friend names, uh, any numbers that are directly related to you that can be easily researched to figure out that that's who you are. Don't use your social security number. If they do hack your password, they now have your social as well. So lots of things there to remember. And once you get to that point, right after I click continue, since it was doing the copy, it had already copied all the files over, so it immediately wanted me to restart. So this will get you up to the point on the gap on what's in between. You'll also be able to see what I'm talking about if you go watch any of the other Ubuntu 16.04 videos like uh, the one for Ubuntu GNOME, the regular Ubuntu install, mate, whatever. It'll pretty well fill in the gap there if you're really worried about it. Alright, and once it finally finishes, it's going to come to this installation complete. Restart now. So just click restart now, or you can click continue testing if you want to play around. I highly recommend you select restart now. Please remove the installation media. It should have. All you have to do is remove the installation media used and then hit enter. Once it boots up, this is the screen you're going to be looking at. This is the plasma setup or the plasma layout, so you can change that if need be. Select that one. type in your password and log in for the first time again this is going to be your super user account so this is the one that you're gonna make all the changes in alright and once it's completed first boot the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is go in and change some settings by adding a user so we're gonna go to system settings so once you get here you'll see this line here personalization it has online accounts regional settings notifications applications and account details go to account details because this is where your user manager is gonna be select the user manager select new user Okay, so the username goes at the top, real name right here. You'll put in the email address there. And then, of course, password. Again, I'm going to use a simple password just because this is a lab VM. I highly recommend you follow my previous instructions about that being your uh, a strong password, nothing linkable linkable to you or anything else do not select automatic login do not do not select administrator click apply now it's going to ask for your admin password you just put it in and now you have your new user so now you can log out and log in as that user restart the system log in as that user whatever you need to do so this gets you fully up and running. You are now ready to use Kubuntu. All you have to do is log in as the other user if you're not installing updates or anything like that and play around on the internet and have a blast. 
This information is out there for absolutely everybody. As always, well, I can share. Have yourselves a great day.